Hello and welcome to Bristol. This is a great city full of amazing sights and lovely people. How do I know? Well, I've lived here for most of my life and now I want to take you on a tour. And what better place to start than here at the harbour side? We've all become very fond of the old docks. They rival anything that the rest of Europe has got to offer and thousands of people enjoy them. It's taken more than 30 years of hard graft to get the SS Great Britain looking like this. I remember when she was brought back to Bristol from the Falklands in 1970. She looked like a floating skip, to be honest. Now, she looks magnificent. We're going up in the world to the Clifton Suspension Bridge. The bridge is the gateway to the west, but it's also the spectacular front driveway into a very special district of Bristol, Clifton. The poet, Sir John Betjeman, decided that this is what Britain is all about. He declared it the finest suburb in England. Our day trip continues by bus, not one of those modern ones. I'm waiting for a real bus, like the one I used to go to school on. That was in the days when Bristol had its own bus company, even if it was the butt of a million jokes. Oh, Bristol buses, we dearly love you. In your British racing green, thundering through our glorious city, seldom heard i never seen Yes, the city that built green buses also produced aircraft and the most beautiful of all was Concorde. It was a collaboration with the French and a project that came to an end here one grey wintry day. November 2003, and through a heavy Bristol sky, the world witnesses the last flight of the last Concorde ever made. This is the final, final approach. Concorde is coming home to the place where it was built, the factory where engineers gave birth to the world's only supersonic airliner. Touchdown and mission accomplished. After 30 years outrunning the sun, now it is a museum piece. Back to our more everyday mode of transport. It's quite a thought that this bus was built when engineers were dreaming up Concorde. That's how far they were ahead of their time. I suppose Brunel started it all with his bridge and boats and railways come to mention it. The Cumberland Basin is another feat of engineering. Bristol's answer to Spaghetti Junction and easy to get lost. But drive on just a few hundred yards further and you're out in the country. We Bristolians can claim ownership of our own stately home. It's called Ashton Court 
and comes with a very nice house and a lot of ground. And this is what it's become really well known for. It's Bristol's answer to Cape Canaveral, the launch pad for a thousand balloons. Every August, the city hosts the biggest balloon fiesta in Europe. is taking us on to one of the most fascinating parts of the city, to an area that was once home to the wealthy merchants, but then became a home from home to many new arrivals. The bus has brought us to Portland Square in St Paul's. This is the multicultural heart of Bristol. In the 1950s and 60s, thousands of people came here to start a new life from the West Indies. And every year, the area bursts into life as people celebrate their roots with carnival. It's now become a huge event and a fixture in the Bristol calendar. Loads of children get involved, and it's a way to join together, have fun, learn about different cultures. This is a Bristol that our ancestors would never have imagined. Integration hasn't always been easy, but these days people of goodwill mix and get on. And that's what this day is all about. And this is where it all started, the bridge around which a community called Bristol grew. A lot of reminders of Bristol's past are still here, even if they have been turned into homes. So we rumble along the cobbles of King Street, past the old pubs and England's oldest working theatre, and on to the curiously named Landogger Trowel. They've been drinking here for 400 years. Even the pirate Blackbeard probably propped up the bar. And opposite, another local institution, the old Duke, centre of the city's jazz. And on that note, this is where our tour of the city has to end. Just a few words of warning though about Bristol. A lot of people come here to work or to study and they never leave. It's that sort of place.